All right, everybody. Welcome to the PPLE webinar. <laughs> My name is Noah. I'm Allison. All right, and we're going to take you through what it is to be part of the class of 2022. So welcome. Where is everybody from? You can just write it in the chat. Yeah, let know. us know. <laughs> let us know where you're coming from. I'm from Vancouver, Canada myself. I'm from the U.S. Austria, Italy, Hungary, Japan. Oh, nice. Kazakhstan, Czech Republic, Netherlands, wow. Netherlands. Quite diverse. Excellent. We have 52 different nationalities at PPLE at the moment. So we are excited to welcome all of you. All righty. So today we're going to talk about the first year curriculum. So what you can expect as part of being in PPLE in your first year what life is going to be like, and we have this real live PPLE <laughs> student uh, who's going to tell you what it is to be part of PPLE and to go to PPLE as a student. We're going to talk about admissions uh, and what that means and what step we're at uh, and what pieces of information we're going to need from you. We're going to talk about enrollment and tuition payment, and we're going to talk about uh, visas and permits and housing. We also have admissions here, so during the chat, if there's any questions that are really specific, you may notice that you get a response directly from admissions uh, and not directly from us, and we're going to do our best to follow the chat. There's also going to be a few designated times for questions, but if there's something you want to ask, uh, we'll do our best while we're going through the slides. Yeah, sounds good. All righty, let's go. So curriculum overview. So PPLE is a three-year Bachelor of Science. Each year has two semesters, and each semester has three blocks. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like, but generally the first semester goes from September until the end of January, and then we have from February until the end of June. So that's what you're looking at uh, for our semesters. Uh, we have different types of courses. We have our academic core, which is interdisciplinary courses, integrative seminars, and research methods. We have our major courses, and there's also going to be some electives uh, along the way. We also have a bachelor thesis, and alongside all of that, we're going to have our talent development program, and we'll get a chance to tell you about all of that as well. All right, so here's our first year curriculum, and this is what you can expect. So if you look, uh, starting from the left where it says semester one, doing research and introduction and politics, power, and governance are going to make up your September, October. Rhetoric, Law, Just, and Morality is going to be uh, November, December, and Integrative Seminar 1 will take place in January. Then February, March, you'll see Philosophy of Social Sciences, Economics, Markets, and Organizations. April, May will be Statistical Analysis and Decision Making, and until the end of June, you will have Solidarity. So that's what you can expect for the first year. Uh, everyone will be uh, all mixed in those classes, but all first-year students will take all of those classes, uh, but you'll be meeting different people yeah. throughout that year uh, in all the different classes. And you're going to choose your major in about May, so where it says statistical analysis and decision-making. In each of these blocks, so for example, where it says uh, doing research and politics, power, and governance, you're going to be just taking those two courses at a time, and you're going to be taking two lectures and two tutorials from each of those courses. So you're looking at 16 contact hours a week for those courses. That's how it goes? That went well? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's a good amount. Sure. Hard to remember, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And so then in exam week, of course, you'll have two exams uh, in exam week because you'll just be taking those two courses, and it sort of goes from there. So one thing that we do have uh, at the University of Amsterdam to go from year uh, one to year two is what's called the Binding Study Advice, or the BSA, as we're going to call it from now on. And the BSA means that you need 54 credits out of the 60 possible credits in the first year in order to get from year one to year two. So you can obtain 60 credits if you pass all 10 of those classes. So you need... 54 credits, which is that you can only fail one course in order to go from the first year until the second year. So we want to make sure that that's clear and that you all know that. Uh, and of course, our participation uh, in these PPLE courses for our tutorials, for example, have a required attendance, and we're really excited to see you all there uh, to be part of this program and be part of that schedule. 
So are there any questions about the program? So how does the program itself set up? What can we expect in the program uh, of PPLE? You can ask myself. Uh, I'm also one of the teachers here. Uh, you can ask our student. When is the exam week? That'll be published in our academic calendar, and those are usually in the last week of each block. Mm. No, not at the moment. It's not possible. Somebody asked if we could double major, so at the moment you won't be able to double major. You can retake any exam, uh, of course. Uh, somebody asked how many retakes there are, uh, so there's retakes uh, that are possible. Any other questions about the actual program, how that might work? Maybe the Bachelor of Science relating. Oh, yeah. Uh, for every discipline, you actually follow a certain statistics course because that will help in your eventual thesis. But in terms of Bachelor of Science, we have research-based courses throughout the PPLE curriculum. So that's why instead of a typical Bachelor of Art, you do develop the... I guess, knowledge of how to do research from qualitative, quantitative point yeah. of view. And that's important to know that this is a research-based Bachelor of Science. So you're going to be doing active research, gathering data, analyzing that data, regardless of what you choose. That's going to be part of this program. I see questions about how much will minors be a part of study. So minors actually aren't a part of our study at all. It's possible to follow a minor outside of PPLE. Yeah. Uh, I had several friends, and especially if you're doing electives, you can add electives in order to do a minor. But it's not required, and it's not part of our program. Yeah. Um, what is your degree if you choose the law specialization? Well, it's the same degree for everyone. What you're going to get is a Bachelor of Science in Politics, Psychology, Law, and Economics with a specialization in what you've chosen. So regardless of what your major is, you get the same degree. How do we choose our majors? Uh, for the majors, if you do the economics major, you have to do a mathematics test in order to get in. But for the other three majors, you can simply choose based on what you have the most passion or want to take for the following two years. Yeah, and we do try to guide you. There's different major market set up so that you can meet everyone, ask questions to the lecturers and the heads of study. Uh, somebody asked, is it possible to take extra courses? You can take extra courses and electives as you go along, but you'll talk to our study counselors about that as well. Uh, lectures are generally held on the same campus, and all of your tutorials are inside the PPLE building. The last thing I looked at uh, about learning a language, that's something you can talk to our study counselors about. Again, a minor is not part of PPLE, so we don't actually have minors as part of our program. Mm. The question about supplementary math courses, I believe that there are programs set up that help in terms of preparation, but they're not through PPLE itself, but there are students who help in tutoring for math courses who have done the economics major and could help with the economics test mm. preparation. And I see a question about exchange. In the third year, first semester, there's an opportunity to go on exchange, and we do have that program at PPLE, which a lot of students do, and it would be in the third year. Any other questions? Everybody's already doing double majors and triple yeah. minors. Start first. <laughs> Super impressive. Yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, Christmas break, yes. Well deserved. Two weeks. And then a one week, <clears throat> I believe, if it's the same as it has been. Somewhere in April. Yeah, you get one week in April, which is different than the other bachelors. We have our own special spring break. Yeah. And it's important to know that we do have school in January and June at the University of Amsterdam. Yes. So those blocks exist. That's block six and block three. So you're going to go uh, all through January. And our last class for our first years this year was going to be the 27th of June. And then there's a few exams after. All right. Well, let's continue on. Uh, OK, uh, I see a question about the thesis. It is an interdisciplinary thesis, of course. Mm, the th which one? I see. When is the longest break? It's the, probably the around the summer break, assuming yeah. that you don't have a lot of resits. Two months. <laughs> yeah. So you can have uh, all of basically July and August off, uh, but you might have resits. On the U.S. Yeah. law schools one, I can jump in on that as well. Um, essentially, to get into U.S. law schools, you have to do an LSAT and do a completely different testing system. And so, yes, that, but that is not necessarily pertaining to PPLE, but you'd have to look in the US requirements. Yeah. Uh, and finally, I'll just take the last one uh, where I saw, 
Will lectures be viewable online? It depends on the lecture. Yes. Some yes, some no. <laughs> depends on the room, depends the on the lecture. And, uh... go, but you'll be at the lecture, so you won't have to worry about that. All right. Um, let's continue on. Life is a PPLE student. Well, who better to tell you about that than our real-life PPLE student right here? Nice. Um, I actually submitted my thesis last week, so no oh. longer PPLE student. Let's hope. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to go great, <laughs> I can tell. But essentially within PPLE, one of the really nice things with the program is because it is so small, you get to know everyone well if you participate in the study association AIM. So AIM has been around for five years, and essentially they are the student run organization that helps organize all sorts of activities, trips, social activities, and networking events pertaining to student life. And because it is student run, you guys come up with the ideas yourself of what kind of events you want to have. And then there's a committee structure where we have different committees in charge of particular things throughout the year. So an academic committee, which hosts different speakers and discussions, the travel committee, which organizes trips, um, a party committee, we just had the infamous boat party a couple of weeks ago. So AIM is really there to help supplement your social life, especially for getting acclimated to Amsterdam. And in terms of outside of AIM, of course, you can still maintain a work-life balance if you participate in sports, if you're part of a student association, if you want to intern. So I would say Amsterdam as well is one of the best cities you can imagine being a university student. There's so much to do, uh, so much to see. With this weather, especially, it's quite nice. To yeah, just, it's nice today. Yeah, be outside. It's 35 degrees. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about student life in general or about AIM, the study association, but yeah. But do you find you're able to go to the 16 uh, required hours, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, contact hours, and still have a life? And do people have jobs? Do people play sports? Yeah, what? How, how does that work? You have to know yourself well enough to know what you can manage because, of course, PPLE is your priority when you come here as a student. But I would say a majority of my friends are also working and turning a part of an association, whether that's a fraternity or sorority, a part of AIM. Uh, for example, I did the AIM board last year, and I've also been interning for the past two years, and then I'm on a, a football team here. So, yeah, you can definitely still manage, uh, but it all comes down to what you yourself can can do and of course you still are able to have a nice social life outside of all of the rigorous schedule and hours you have yeah i think the nature of a of a pple college kind of setup is that the courses run when they do mm -hmm. so you sort of have to make sure that you attend and make that schedule a priority but it's not unmanageable because we're only doing two classes at once yeah so no, exactly. in that way you know your schedule you know what you can do and what you can't do uh, in which parts of the day, but it's not an overwhelming amount of required contact hours. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. All right, let's talk about admissions. Uh, but wait, before that, did anybody have any other questions about For this, uh, student? There are quite a few students do work at the same time. Of course, if you're international, you have to look into the requirements for insurance and for hours you can work per week. Um, a sports team, that's totally dependent on what sport you want to do. You would normally go through a sport club. Uh, How hard is it to get to a sports team? I think it just depends on what Yeah, it depends on, depends on, on your level, what, what's the, what you yeah. want. Quite a few people do, I think, field hockey. They're, they're actually within AIM. There is a football team. There is a field hockey team. And sometimes volleyball they play as well. So. so yes, UVA does have sports teams. And of course, as a PPLE student at the UVA, you are a member of the UVA. You can join yeah. any team, do anything you want to do. Um, for in today week, I think we'll kind of touch upon that later. It is not required, but highly recommended. It's highly one of the best times to get to know the city and meet new people. My best friends are from my entry group, actually. So definitely recommend it if you can go. Uh, and also in that first week, and we're going to tell you about a few dates of the week before classes start, other than intray week, we also have our orientations. So I would definitely plan on being there for that, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Yeah. Um, PPLE is not isolated at all as far as the location. The courses that are the core courses of PPLE are for PPLE students only, but you can take electives outside of PPLE as well. Yeah. Um, It's not about whether or not you have a free day or not. Uh, in the first year, you have these 16 contact hours. It's likely that your schedule would be something like uh, 
Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, Thursday, because mm-hmm. it's both things are two times a week. We don't know this moment, uh, but you're not going to have nine to five Monday to Friday classes because there's only 16 contact hours. The gym is not part of PPLE. Somebody asked about how much the gym is, but you can look up uh, the university gym and, and you can see there's all different memberships, all different lengths of time. It's all there. Yes. The lectures and the tutorials, they ask where they take place. They do take place for the most part on Rutgers Island. There's always one or two that might be somewhere else, but generally, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one free day in the timetable. I'm not sure what that is. It might happen, but we, it's, not part of, it's not part of our general plan. How central? Uh, if you look it up on the map or if you're familiar at all with Amsterdam, we're sort of beside the zoo. Yeah, it's a great location. It's really easy. Most people do not live in central Amsterdam, but we'll talk about yeah. that when we get to housing. It's hard to find a job if you don't speak Dutch. Uh, no, a lot of our students have no problem with that. Yeah. And for Internet Week as well, you are with PPLE only students. Okay, let's continue on. We'll get back to a lot of these things, especially the opening week and, and housing uh, and on all of this as well. So admission requirements. So just as a reminder, so what you've received is what's called a conditional offer from our admissions. So that means that you must meet the conditions that are on that offer. So those could include things like an accepted diploma. You must make sure you have the right grade point average. We want to make sure you have a sufficient level of mathematics. You have to make sure that there's a proficiency in English. And the specific requirements for your diploma type can be found on pple.uva.nl. So you can go there, look it up by country, and find out exactly what uh, you need. And also, in your conditional acceptance, uh, it'll give you an indication of that. So what the next steps that you need to take are, you should finalize your registration by submitting certified hard copies of your documents before the 20th of July. And those must be certified documents that we get directly to us sent, uh, not just photocopies, for example. We understand that sometimes uh, people's grades are coming in a little bit later than that, but just make sure that we know and that we're getting everything as soon as we can. Um, But July 20th is the date that you want to make sure to meet. Once your documents are received, a final decision on admission will be issued. So you're not fully admitted until you have this final decision of admission, even though you have at the moment this conditional offer. Um, If applicable, uh, we need to talk about the visa or residence permit, and you'll need to pay your tuition fees. So this is how you submit your documents. You need to submit them by the 20th of July. It's a very important date, the 20th of July. And what we require are certified hard copies of your secondary diploma and transcripts of your final grades. So if applicable, we also need your English proficiency results. So whichever test that is that you took. If applicable, we also need your math test results if you take in a supplementary math test. And you must send in hard copies. We can't take a digital scan. It must be a hard copy. Um, And that's excluding your VVO and IB candidates. So you have to make sure that you're sending that via post. And you must send it to this address. And you might see when you Google that there's different addresses for the University of Amsterdam. This is the one that will get to our office. So make sure that you've got this one, the one on the (laughs) Vulcaneerstrat. If you have any specific questions about admissions, uh, we do have admissions here. And of course, you can ask pple.uva.nl if you have any very specific questions um, about your situation. Mm-hmm. So enrollment and tuition. So you're going to receive emails uh, from UVA Student Services about your enrollment steps and what you need to do. Um, Your enrollment will be final once you've paid the tuition fee, and you can either pay by direct debit, you can pay by credit card uh, or ideal, uh, which is sort of a Dutch direct debit system, let's call it, Um, or you can pay by bank transfer. Um, More information is at uva.nl slash tuition, and if you have any questions about tuition, you want to make sure that you go to that website that you can see uh, just below there for any questions about that directly. These are the tuition fees 
that are for 2019 and 2020. So you can see uh, for our Dutch and EU and for our non-EU EEA students. Visas and permits. Okay, so there's no visa needed directly uh, if you, uh, sorry, if your nationality is from the EU, from the EEA, or from Switzerland. All other nationalities, that's included, yeah. <laughs> uh, must apply for a residence permit, uh, and in some cases an entry visa through the University of Amsterdam. In that case, the UVA's international office, uh, ha if they have not contacted you yet, please contact them at uva.nl uh, slash DSSD. That's really important that you make sure that this is sorted long before uh, you look at coming to Amsterdam because these are visas and entry visas uh, and proper things that you need to be able to study here. Um, and generally you can't show up on the first day and then sort it. So you have to make sure that you do this way ahead of time. For more information directly on that, you want to go to uva.nl slash visa. So any questions about admission or enrollment? For the rules on the Dutch government fee reduction, for that you'll have to go back to this slide and follow that yeah. link because all information pertaining to that is on the website. It's PPLE isn't able to determine if you are able to qualify for the reduction, so just check the website. Yeah, so go to this web, go to this site that we have posted down there, and they'll be able to tell you. Uh, it's not something that we decide as a program. Uh, about working part-time with a student visa, it depends what kind of visa you have and what it says. Sometimes, and generally, there's about, what is it, 10 hours? Yeah, I'm it not differs. sure. Really it differs, so I hesitate I to know. say yes to this, but you can actually look it up and they'll be able to yeah. tell you what you can do with it. A um, hundred years ago when I came here as a student, <laughs> uh, you could do something. That's a good answer. Yeah. I know for sure you can work, but again, just check online to see yeah. how many hours if there is a maximum. Just going to go back to the questions page. So uh, there was another question about first years and paying uh, less than the full amount uh, if you are Dutch or EU. Again, you have to go to that website that we showed you and they'll be able to tell you about eligibility. Also, I saw a question earlier on the screen about the age of PPLE students. I know in my year it was a range of 16 to 26 and then I think the following year people again who were 16 to even 30 years old so it is a range but the average person was probably 19 or 20. Maybe? Yeah I would say most people in first year are 18 and 19 generally 18, 19. yeah generally in first year most students will be 18 and 19. Any final questions before we move on? Also, for the payments, I believe that's through a StudiLink, yeah. and you can arrange to pay in installments. You don't have to pay everything at once. Okay. Oh, and there we go. There's our answer from admissions. Ah. Uh, and yes, it is also recommended to have a bank account when you're here from the Netherlands. I yeah. would say just makes it a lot easier in terms of handling a lot of the, I don't know, so I see a question about when we recommend you arrive, and we're going to talk about that when we talk about the first week, but I would say at least a week before classes start so that you can have the introduction days. So, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go on. Housing. You'll probably want somewhere to live. All right. So this is how that works. PPLE is a non-residential program, which means we don't have PPLE residences themselves. The city is our campus. The University of Amsterdam is sort of all over the city. We are in one of the campuses in the center called Rutgers Island. International first year students are eligible to apply for housing through the University of Amsterdam, but it's at the moment it's now closed. So if you've not applied yet, uh, that is closed. So there's a price range of about 400 to 850 per month. The private market can be more expensive and a bit tricky. I will absolutely say this, do not arrive here without having sorted housing. If you arrive here for the first day of school without a plan, it can be very difficult. So this is something that you should start, if you haven't already started looking into, 
uh, immediately because once you arrive, it's going to be quite difficult in the first week of September uh, to find somewhere uh, if you haven't sorted that already. Um, and also, please be aware of scams. If you go online to something like Craigslist or Mark Plots or one of these things and someone says something that's too good to be true, I hate to tell you it is. I think it is. Yeah. Um, what do you think about housing? Tell me. How did it go for you? Yeah, luckily I had quite a nice experience. Uh, in the first year, I was through the UVA housing with the two different companies, Duo and Taki. And then in the second year and now in my third year, I had an apartment that I had with a friend from PPLE and from another study. And my advice, if well, first, when you're looking for the apartments as well, um, of course, if you can, try to get UVA housing. And if it's not applicable, there is a waiting list from PPLE housing. And you, if you're not already on the housing waiting list, you can email admissions-pple at uva.nl. And if you're looking for an apartment within the city, um, I can assure you, you will find something, especially when you're looking for the second and third year. And also there is a PPLE all student Facebook page with people from the past of PPLE and people who are currently students. And occasionally they will be posting about looking for a new roommate. So make sure to check that out on Facebook. But promise that you won't come to the student desk on the first day and ask us where to find a house. Because yeah. that would be difficult. So make sure that this is something that you sort ahead of time. <clears throat> and then from the second year on, generally students find housing together. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and it generally all works out, of course. Yeah, all um, my friends have houses. Everyone is living somewhere. <laughs> yes. uh, but, but make sure that this is something that you take a look at. All right, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything that has not been answered. So no housing is not guaranteed. You definitely have to apply. You definitely have to look for it. As far as face groups go, mm -hmm. Facebook groups go, it's like what we said. There isn't really a best one. Uh, there's different websites that you can find. Funda, Prairius. Uh, yeah, I would say some people use it's called ISM International Market, I believe. But then those are people who we don't necessarily know. But the, if you go on Facebook and just PPLE Student <clears throat> All, I believe it's called, that's where you'll find people maybe going on exchange who have a room to rent or just looking for new roommates in general. There are not hostels that you can stay at for several months. So I would not plan on that being an option. Um, also, the Dutch weather isn't always 35 degrees, so you definitely <laughs> also don't want to be setting up in the campsite that we've heard some people asking yeah. about before. You don't want to be living in a tent. So no, the, the hostels in Amsterdam, because Amsterdam is quite a busy tourist city, um, will generally be with tourists and it'll be by the day, it'll be, it'll be not cheap. Yeah. <clears throat> I would not plan on that. All right, continuing on. For international students who have already applied, <clears throat> you can expect to receive an email about your room reservation from one of our partner housing corporations before mid-August. There are currently 50 students on our waiting list for housing. <clears throat> registration fees. There's no refund if you decide not to make use of a room offered to you at the UVA. You will receive a refund only if the UVA is unable to find you a room. <clears throat> Pickup service. I'll let you tell us about that, but we do have a service for if you arrive uh, that we can come and get you uh, and, and uh, help orient you here in the city. Yeah. How'd that go? No, it was really easy, really efficient and well handled. You essentially, as soon as you're at Schiphol, then you have students from the university, not from PPLE, but in general overall, and they will guide you to the location where you will have the arrangement for if you're through Duo or Deki, <coughs> through the UVA housing, where you can pick up your key and start your, I believe, the, yeah, the start appointment and... I can't remember everything now because it was a little while ago, but you start arranging paperwork as well. And in terms of if you're going to get a Dutch bank account, they're there to assist you. And for your residence permit, they will assist you in terms of the next steps to collecting that. Yeah, but you have to book it in advance. If you just show up at the airport and wait for somebody to get you, they won't know that you came there. So please make sure that you book it in advance. Um, yeah, I just saw a question about if somebody finds an apartment in The Hague. Yeah, I commuted from The Hague for seven years. It works. It's good. Yeah, I, yeah, quite a few friends who were in Leiden as well. Yeah, it's Rotterdam, about 30 so. minutes away. It, <clears throat> the Netherlands is not huge, and by train it's quite simple. So, yeah, that works. And pickup service apply if you come by a train. Not I think sure. it's a Schiphol service, it's, actually. It's, yeah, it's from Schiphol, so perhaps if you go then to Schiphol, but I can't give a definite answer on that one. Yeah. 
It's definitely something you arrange with them. It's from the UVA, not from PPLE. The all-inclusive start appointment. Ah, How was that? No, again, it was quite handy. I had everything sorted for me immediately and was able to go straight to my apartment with ease and without working on internet at the time. So yeah, it, it's quite helpful and the people are there to assist you. And um, yeah, collecting your student card, that's also quite important, of course, because to get into the PPLE building, you have to have your student card activated. Uh, registration. I, yeah, I saw a question about parents to the introduction day. We actually don't recommend that parents come to our introduction day. Mm. Uh, it's all our students. It's our opening class um, uh, assembly for the first time. Uh, so we only recommend that it's, it's students that are coming to that introduction day. Yeah, scheduling the appointment for a Dutch bank account, free shuttle, information about residence permit. So yeah, also just so you know, you, you don't have the physical residence permit until you're in the country, so don't worry about receiving the card in the mail of your home country. So that will all be sorted if you're able to book this appointment, which, again, really important to, to book it. All right. What are good neighborhoods in Amsterdam? They're all good neighborhoods. Amsterdam's <laughs> small and lovely. Very polite. When is the introduction day? Well, just wait a moment, and I'm going to tell you all about it. Any questions, or more questions, about housing, start appointments, getting here, anything like that? Uva short stay housing, not entirely sure, but I imagine those are people on exchange. Oh, they say housing for one year. There we go. Oh, yeah, um, one year. Is there an alternative to the start appointment on the sixteenth and nineteenth? I don't know. It's run by the University of Amsterdam. I doubt it. Where did you live in your first year? Uh, the neighborhood was uh, Hofdorplein, and oh, I. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I lived in just a giant building on Forbergstraat. The end of the two tram. I, I yeah, can't remember because also speaking of everyone bikes so <clears> as soon as you're here get a bike because I never uh, did the tram so I can't remember but um you know what housing also is quite nice because if you're through one of the UVA housing programs you are with a lot of other international students who are outside of PPLE so it's a great way to meet people in your building and someone uh, is asking about uh, parents coming with them for the pickup service. I don't think that that's possible. You'll have to contact the pickup service, but I do believe it's only for students arriving on their own. They, there were, I remember a couple parents, but then in general, I think only students are technically allowed in the van and the shuttles when they're dropping you off at your apartment that yeah. you are registered to. So yeah, typically just the students. Any other questions? Housing, start appointments. But Other things are you're going to get your student card. You have to make sure that you uh, have that. You're going to have a student email, which we all want to make sure that we activate so you can get all the information. So this is quite important. When will the introduction be? I promised a slide coming. <laughs> okay. So uh, what we have here uh, is where you can check student.uva.nl slash PPLE for more info. Uh, so that's generally fine. Start magazine. Oh, we can also see, of course, uva.nl slash FAQ if you have frequently asked questions about this. So Start magazine. Uh, we recommend you check out the Start magazine for international students. This includes information on the UVA uh, and Amsterdam to help you get settled. How do you get a student card if you can't make it for a start appointment? Oh, everybody can just uh, order them. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's possible online. They'll show you how to do it. So you don't have to be at the start appointment to do that. Introduction day. See, I told you there'd be a slide. <laughs> okay. So our PPLE orientation day is Monday, the 26th of August. So here's the questions I get immediately. Do we have to be there? Is it mandatory? Must we go? No, but yes. Come, it'll be fun. Uh, you get to meet everybody on the first day. Everybody's excited to be there. Uh, it's a really good energy. You get to meet what's called your mentor group, which is a group of students that together you'll be with the staff uh, that's going to sort of answer your questions and be your contact. Um, it's really a, a nice day to be there. So if you can be there for Monday the 26th, I think it's really worth it. 
Uh, that week as well, aside from Intre Week, which is not officially from PPLE, we have our own events. So for example, we've got uh, the Monday will be our PPLE Orientation Day. Either Tuesday or Wednesday is going to be our Talent Development Program opening. So we generally get all together. Uh, you find out about the Talent Development Program. Uh, there's usually speakers and snacks. It's yeah. quite nice. Uh, and, and generally we have that. Um, there's a mentor lunch. There's like a few things that we do that week that's really nice before you start classes because you'll start classes the following Monday. Well, I don't know, Monday. But specifically, yeah. but, but from yeah, Monday is, 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 that, is that day that you'll start classes. And it's nice to also not arrive the first day of the first class. And also for the Interday Week as well, as Noah mentioned, this is not a PPLE run Interday Week. It's through the UVA. However, there is an AIM, so the Study Association has a committee that organizes for all PPLE students. So you'll be with PPLE students, and it's a great week in order to get to know the city. They, you have all sorts of excursions. You go to different museums. Then in every evening, there's some sort of social event. So I highly recommend if you're in town and available to make it. So let me clarify this one more time. So there's three things. One are PPLE introduction days. This is free. These are large-scale events for all PPLE students to meet everyone and have an orientation and meet the staff and see the building and meet your mentor group and all of this stuff. So that's one. Then we have the UVA Intray Week, which is where you'll see the link there that you can register for. Also is what we just heard about with the PPLE Intray Week. Yeah. They, the Intray Week is separate from the PPLE days. However, they work together with PPLE, so you're not going to miss activities from one or the other. You can definitely participate in both, and it is encouraged to do both. If you're going to be here and you want to leave it till the night before to register, how about just register right now? Click below. <laughs> nice. There's always people that wish they registered, and then they're like, oh, can I still get a wristband? Yeah. Then it's too late. Every year. Don't, don't let that be you. Okay. Do we have any final questions? Any questions you'd like to ask about any of this that we've talked about uh, throughout this presentation? So is it possible to join Intra Week and PPLE events? We hope you do. How diverse are the teachers? What do you mean by diverse? We are from 18 different countries. Uh, we have all different backgrounds, uh, interdisciplinary from all four uh, uh, of, of those disciplines, but as well as others. Um, but diverse is a large term. Tell me what you mean. Do you have personal recommendation mm. for finding room in Amsterdam? No. I would say just look online. There are main web pages like Funda, Perarius. Um, the more legit you you find, then the 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 less chance there is of it not being um, a proper place. A lot of people I know as well went through agents. And yeah. so if you're able to even get recommendations on agents that you know of other students who have used, then of course you will have to pay a specific deposit, but then you're secured housing for yeah. a bit of a longer time. Yeah. And you asked, again, diversity nationalities. Like I said, we're, I think the staff are coming from about 18 different countries, maybe 20 at the moment. The email address for specific questions, it depends on what topic. Mm, the admissions. Oh, so for yeah. admissions, it's admissions dash PPLE, like they said. Um, the main career prospects, that's quite hard to judge, for one, because the program is so new, but also because the, it is interdisciplinary and you have all sorts of people going in different directions. I can say from my friends who are currently graduating, we have <clears throat> quite a few who will do exchange, quite a few who will continue with a master's. Uh, I spoke with someone recently who's now working at Deloitte. So. It's all over the place. You're not limited. With but PLA. let's have a talk about these four <laughs> subjects uh, so that we understand what is going to be in these four subjects so that you know exactly uh, what we're going to be doing. I think that's important because yeah, the absolutely. subjects have uh, a general topic, a general direction, a general path. Okay. In politics, we are going to be doing EU and international politics. That is going to be the general majority of the subjects and topics within politics. In psychology, and this is an important one, so make sure you listen up, we're going to be doing social and a bit of organizational psych. What we're not going to be doing is clinical psych or counseling psych. So make sure that you know that and make sure that you uh, uh, are comfortable with that. You also cannot transition into clinical psych for a master's or as a program without doing a complete secondary bachelor. So 
psychology at PPLE is only social and if you add organizational, but not at all clinical with no bridge and no continuation to clinical or counseling psych. Yes. Uh, Claire, do you have any questions about that? Uh, well, also for economics, that's yeah. economics and business. And for law, it's international and EU law. Does that mean that as soon as I graduate, I'm a lawyer? No, it does not. And okay. that's actually quite important because I'm also <laughs> seeing questions about master applications. That really depends on what masters you are going to eventually look into in your third year. And then you have to look at what the course requirements are. Because for some masters, they may require additional electives. For others, mm. you will be able to get in straight away with PPLE degree. But that's a question to come later in your uh, PPLE career. And also, we can't say what your home country, for example, qualifies for the bar to become, say, a criminal lawyer there. Yeah. So what you should be expecting from law from us is EU and international law that you could, for example, continue to a international law masters. So what type of masters can you do with these majors? Well, in politics, people are going into EU international law, public policy, these kind of things. Uh, in psychology, we're going into social psych. Uh, we are going into uh, all different types of human behavior kind of psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, then law, we're going into EU and international law masters. And economics is economics and business, so finance, accounting, these kind of things. That is what you can expect. But I just I want to make sure that everybody knows that so that nobody comes asking where the clinical classes are. <laughs> There's additional research if you go directly to the faculty, but not from PPLE. So, for example, from psychology, you could try to be a part of a lab. We do have internships. Somebody asked about internships. So there are, uh, and we have a specific internship coordinator. We don't say have a list and you just pick one and go do that. Uh, but it's something that you can definitely look into. What is the degree called when we graduate? Well, mm. I will tell you this again and make sure that you know this. Everybody get it a pen. <laughs> I'll wait. Okay. It is a Bachelor of Science in Politics, Psychology, Law, and Economics with a specialization in the one that you chose. My favorite question I ever got after one of these webinars was, what's the L? <laughs> favorite question. So politics, psychology, law, and economics, Bachelor of Science. It is a research-based Bachelor of Science. You're going to get to do all kinds of exciting research. Uh, so make sure that's something you're excited about. Um, uh, also, I've seen two questions related to when can we buy books and now about AIM Introduction Week. Mm. You can go to AIM's website, so I, I believe it's aimpple.nl. And they actually, if you buy your AIM membership, which you should to support the association, and you get a lot of great discounts, including a discount on your school textbooks. But the textbook list, I'm not sure if they're published yet, but you can order all of that through the Anthony and Bookstore, which is found on the AIM website. So go to that. And in terms of the information about the Internet Week, that's still to come. But again, just check AIM's Facebook page and their website. Okay, uh, and I just got another question about the AIM website, which is aimpple. Dot NL. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I see a question about, are there enough ECTS in the majors to do a master's? Yes. However, like any program, and this is not specific to PPLE, some masters require additional courses um, that students will take. So one of, in the nature of PPLE, and that is an interdisciplinary course, is that you're taking courses in politics, psychology, law, and economics, so there's less of a focus on just one. Yes, you're going to major, say, in law, mm -hmm. but you still will take classes the whole way through in politics, economics uh, as well. Uh, and yeah, politics, economics, and psychology as well. So because you have those alongside, there's a chance that for your master's, you might have to take an additional course. Um, some of my psych students are taking an additional course, for example, that's usually outlined by whatever school you're going to or whatever program. But yes, should you do PPLE law? Can you do a master's? Yes. 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 And I saw a question what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing a master's of international business law next year. And I was a law specialization. And also I work with uh, football agents. So I'll be interning still in the year to come. You choose electives during registration period. So actually registration for our uh, students for one of the years ended today. Uh, and yeah. so they just chose their electives. Um, yeah, it goes pretty easy.
Is there a Class of 22 Facebook group? I don't know. Seems, have you yes. created one? Also, the, normally the classes make a WhatsApp chat. I'm not sure if you guys have that. but Just careful of the rumor mill. <laughs> if there's yeah. anything you want to know that you hear, for instance, in WhatsApp or Facebook and it's technical or administrative and you're not sure, make sure to ask us. We're happy to answer. But also check, there is it. you should have a class of 2022, but join the PPLE student all page because also that's a nice way again about housing or to get tips from older students. And you don't have to worry about electives or elective deadlines at all right now because there are no electives in the first year. All right, any other questions? All right, then we are really excited to see you in August, uh, and we hope that you're gonna have a great time at PPLE. Uh, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna leave this chat open uh, for about another 30 minutes, just so that if you do have any questions, we're gonna do our best to answer. The webinar's been recorded, so you're gonna receive an email with the webinar so that you can uh, have a look. Uh, we're gonna let you know when it's online. There's gonna be a little bit more information. Any questions or any major questions that are going to be answered, we'll try to add that as well. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, and we're going to see you in Amsterdam soon. Yeah. All right. So excited. Yes. So please, uh, we're going to leave this open. Do you have uh, uh, any other questions for us? The... PPLE introduction events, how do you sign up? For the PPLE ones, you don't sign up. You can go as a PPLE student. Yeah, so PPLE events like our opening day, the TDP event, these kind of things, you just go. Uh, monthly expenses, that is an incredibly Didn't personal, you all do a financial individual plan? thing. So <laughs> You've I already done that. <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately can't give advice on that. You know yourself, what you spend on food, uh, going out, clothing. So try again, look at your financial plan. Cost of public transport, it depends where you're coming from, but generally a one-zone month unlimited pass is under 50 euros. Also, again, highly, highly recommend getting a bike because especially during Interweek, week, everyone is by bike. If you're scared to ride in Amsterdam for the first time, trust me, I learned how to ride a bike at 14 quite late, so don't worry, you, you will be fine. But you can buy used bikes for quite affordable prices here. Do they need to register also for PPLE Intra week? Uh, the, for PPLE Interweek, Week, no, because the committee, if you register through the UVA, you are automatically going to be a part of PPLE groups and the committee organizing for you guys already has in mind the PPLE events. So you'll be able to go to the Intra Week events and PPLE events. Mm -hmm. uh, TDP, the Talent Development Program, that essentially, as the name describes it's looking to help develop and enhance your talents so they have really nice workshops different every year yeah and it's also students organize the kind of events so there was one recently about the psychology of happiness and you can get perspectives on that planning different i think life goals was one and then how to even fix your bike so practical workshops so it's just enhancing your own sort of uh, personal talents so like I said, yes, you can watch the webinar later. If you take a look at the slide, we're going to send you an email uh, once it's ready. How will I receive public transport as a student with Dutch nationality? Yeah, so jealous. Yeah, you have to apply to that yourself. It's not through PPLE. If housing is closed and I have not yet applied for one yet, must I find one that is not nope. partnered with the UVA? You might have to. Uh, you can put your, I, I'm not sure how it still works with the waiting list. I'll let them answer that for you. But also you can, again, look for apartments yeah. in the city itself. Somebody's asking again, if you have to register for PPLE orientation days, no, you do not. You simply arrive and uh, yeah, join us. What you do have to register for is the intra week, which is not part of PPLE, even the PPLE intra week. Yes. Do we have any Argentinians? I, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I, there's a girl in my year and someone else who graduated. Yeah. We can't specify how big the chances are we for getting a room with Uva. We really, it's kind of hard for us to determine, I would say. How much is public transportation for non-Dutch people on average? Well, like I said, mm. if you want to buy an unlimited zone one pass, which is basically the rings to the bottom of the park, 
kind of area, it's about 45 a month unlimited. Otherwise, you want it's going to cost about a euro something per uh, ride. And make sure that you have the public transport chip card. You'll have to order that yourself or get one from a, an anonymous one from one of the kiosks. Because uh, if you pay per ride, it's like triple the cost. It's like three euros mm -hmm. per ride. All right. Do you also want to drop your Insta name? No, I'm not dropping my Instagram <laughs> name. It's very cryptic. I think it just is my name. Oh. I don't, didn't. Uh, any other questions? I'm going to let them take a look at the housing and scholarships information directly. All right, so we'll leave this open if you have any more direct technical questions. Uh, we really want to thank you for being a part of this. Uh, we hope that we've given you all the information you need to be excited about coming and seeing us uh, and spending the next three years uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, we've so far had a great time. This is the fifth year of PPLE existing. Yes. Uh, so we're really excited to see you. Uh, and thanks so much for being part of this. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. see you in September. Best of luck. Or August. Enjoy your summer as well. Take it easy. Yeah. Have a rest. Don't worry. Before it yeah. starts. Before the fun starts. That's yeah. a good way to put it. All right. Well, this is us signing off. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Have a, one, have a, have a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, it's 35 degrees here in Amsterdam. We're excited about that. Uh, yes. But when for you arrive, make sure to bring an umbrella. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye-bye.